So my name is Ignacio Cano. I am a senior lecturer at the State University of Rio de Janeiro. I lecture on research methods and then my research areas are violence, human rights and public security. I would say one of the main conclusions after 15 years of investigation and research in Brazil is that there is a close connection between um, corruption, you know, big organized crime on the one hand, and then violence on the other hand. Even though corrupt politicians, corrupt judges, etc., are not the ones who get their hands dirty and commit acts of violence, but these circuits are closely connected. So if we want to um, diminish violence to reasonable levels, we will have to tackle these organized crime issues at some point. Also, my personal view is that because we're going to have the Soccer World Cup and the Olympic Games, a lot of money is coming to the city and to the state. And the fact that there's so much money coming in makes it easier for all these circles to do their business without violence, because there's a lot to be shared and, and also violence is going to be very negative both for the World Cup and for the Olympic Games. So there's a strong motivation now to try to diminish violence uh, while these corrupt circles still make a lot of money. But of course after the Olympic Games 2007 this money will stop coming and then these circles will have to share whatever is left and my fear is if we cannot change these structures along these next um, five years we might find ourselves in a very difficult position in 2017. No money, um, all these corrupt circles expecting to earn as they have in the last years and if the structure continues to be the same, then there is a possibility that it, violence will explode again. I think uh, it's true that the tradition in Brazil is that you have a formally egalitarian framework. The laws, for the most part, though not all of them, I, people abroad, for example, don't know if you have a university degree, you have the right to a special prison in Brazil. You don't have to go to the common filthy prisons which is a scandal in terms of equality. But with some exceptions, let's say, that the legal framework is very egalitarian and then the social reality is very um, unegalitarian. Uh, so people who are in the criminal justice system have to make this adjustment between formal systems that treat everybody the same and the social reality which is very, very unfair and very unequal. Um, and it's true that people are used to bending the law, not abiding by the law, the famous J. Chinu. There's a cultural problem. Uh, you, will, you will hear many people complaining about corruption, but then in the, if they're caught um, in a driving offense, they will offer the police officer some money to get away with it. We have these famous uh, senators who were, we, who were stopped and they had been drinking and driving and they refused to collaborate, for example, which is a scandal. Um, so yes, there is a lot of hypocrisy because the system, perverse though it may be, benefits many people. Um, but on the other hand, there are many people in Brazil who are tired of this. There are many people in Brazil who would like to have a decent police force, a decent state, who are tired of corruption. Um, and I think these people are getting stronger. They're getting stronger in numbers and they're getting stronger in their um, ability to express their views. Um, so the tolerance, the social tolerance for corruption is diminishing and the social demand for more um, just uh, systems and, and for a rule of law, if you want, is increasing. My impression is that we are going in the, in the right direction. It's a long path, uh, but we're going in the right direction. And I don't think that his statement that people don't think don't want the police to change and people don't want a legal and decent police force is true as a whole at all. I think um, if you ask people in the poor communities for example they want police, they want police force but they want a police force that respects them, that treats them as citizens, you know that's what they want um, and that's what most people want. Even though you may be benefited here or there by a situation where you can buy your way out of trouble in many other cases, this is going to work against you. And people know that. You know, like, okay, I can bribe an officer to avoid paying a fine, for example. But some other time, somebody's going to do something negative to me, and I won't be able to um, 
have my rights sustained because this guy is going to pay the same policeman and nothing is going to happen. So I think things are changing and I think that even though there is a cultural problem there, more and more people are conscious that we need a new situation. There's also something linked to self-esteem. Um, Brazilian self-esteem tended to be typically low, but this is changing. You know? Now you have this huge economic crisis in Europe, also in the US, and Brazil's economy is growing. Um, the exchange rate between the real and the dollar or the euro is favorable. People are traveling abroad. So Brazilians are having this impression that they're getting to be more important in the world. Also, from a diplomatic point of view, Brazil is gaining uh, importance. Um, he's now, Brazil is trying to get into the um, Security Council, for example. Uh, and I think that having uh, a less corrupt public sector is part of this evolution. I think that people expect that if we're going to be a quote-unquote first world country, um, we also need to, to mend that and that we cannot expect to be a very important power in the world and still deal with, you know, corrupt, please corrupt politicians all the time. Even though, as most people who study these, these issues know, there is corruption in, in rich countries uh, as well. But uh, at least the, the mechanisms, the, trans the transparency and the mechanisms to fight corruptions are more developed in some countries than others. In Rio de Janeiro, um, well, we don't usually have a very good harvest of politicians in Rio de Janeiro, if I am to be very honest about it. And that has to do, to do with um, the fact that we were the capital of Brazil, so there were lots of networks of corruption and clientelism. And then when the capital went to Brasilia and the state of Rio de Janeiro declined economically, um, the, whole, the whole result of this process is that um, I know, for example, several initiatives which deal with corruption in several organizations. And typically, in several organizations, Rio de Janeiro will always be one of the worst states in terms of corruption, etc. So, um, and the way the political campaigns have been financed through illegal lotteries, for example, the Jogo do Bicho, has made it so that um, politics in Rio de Janeiro is not a very clean game. Of course, there are people committed to changing this. I, I highly respect Marcelo Freixo, for example, who has conducted this um, parliamentary commission on, uh, uh, on militias and has had his own life threatened because of that. I respect other politicians. I respect Malone, for example. There are a few politicians I respect, but there are many, many of them I don't respect very much. And I think that as a society, we have to react because these politicians don't get in through their own votes. We vote them in. And I think society has to be more conscious that if we don't like corruption, we then we have to think who we vote. And I think many people are still under the old model of clientelistic politics. So um, the local um, political leader will bring you, I don't know, um, an ambulance or will build a school and he will present that as something of his own making and will request political loyalty in exchange. Um, you, we have to eliminate that. Um, they, these people don't do anything with their own money. It's our own money they're using and it's their duty. Um, so it's also Brazil is a very um, corporatist society. So if you go to parliament, whatever parliament you may go to, state assemblies or the national parliament, you will find representatives of the colonels of the military police, representatives of the um, investigators of the civil police, representatives of the firemen, representatives of the judges, a lot of corporate interests are represented in Parliament. Um, and on the other hand, there are not so many people who think of the global interest as a whole. Um, I think police badly need, uh, Brazil badly needs um, electoral reform, a new overhaul of the electoral system. Uh, for example, people get in mostly through the votes on their own name. That means they have to campaign on their own money. And that means, of course, that many of them want to get the money back while they're in office. It's like an investment. You know, you spend some of your money for the campaign, and then if you get in, you get back the money. How do you get back the money? In the best scenario, th through using favors and influence. In the worst scenario, through direct corruption. Um, so, I think, for example, that 
the new law should strengthen the role of political parties and political parties should be responsible for the candidates. It's not acceptable as we have the situation now in the federal government, lots of corrupt um, politicians in several ministries, the Ministry of Transport, lately the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Agriculture, and the parties which have indicated these people, they say, well, we have nothing to do with them. You know, these people got voted in themselves. And that's not acceptable. I mean, if, if there are 20 people who were elected in your own um, list, in your own party, and they're corrupt, you have to be held responsible for that. So I think we need electoral reform and we need to change politics in this country because as long as politicians are elected through these old networks, it'll be very difficult to change that.